morning, brothers and sisters. It's good to see you this morning again. Uh, thanks again for the invitation. Uh, thanks to the elders, the deacons, and thanks to the whole congregation for this invitation. And the title of this presentation for this morning is No. And thanks to Brother Charles for the scripture reading from 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8 through verse 16. Normally, I don't use too many verses, but this time, uh, sorry for that, for the long scripture reading. So, we are going to be learning this morning how the Lord is so powerful to change one no for one yes. So, the title of my, my lesson for this morning is No. Let's go to the introduction. And this is the story of one widow who thought that she was going to die because it was a terrible situation in that country in, in, on those times. And she thought, my last food, my last dinner, and I'm going to pass away. It was a terrible famine in that land at that time. It was a terrible drought in that land at that time. And we have been droughts right here in California. And I remember when I was going years ago in the freeway, and I, I read some signs on the, on the fields. Please pray for rain. And right here in the area, we see some uh, man-made uh, lakes. And we also, we also see that all those lakes are almost empty, no water. And that's, and that's a terrible situation. We are sad. We're thinking, what's wrong? It's not raining. If there is no rain, there is no life. Without Christ, there is no life. Talking about the spiritual uh, terms. So it's the same thing with the physical thing. So we need to be praying to the provider and to the giver of all those things for all those things. Because we are need all these things to be living in this planet or in this world. So this word of each other, I'm going to die. Uh, there was a famine in the earth. A terrible famine. And she and her son have nothing to eat. Like I said before, it's no rain, it's a, a terrible drought, no food. All the trees die, all the animals die, because all these are depending on the rain, or the weather, or a good weather in this case. So she thought, no, we have nothing to it. And remember, she was a widow. She doesn't have a, a head to be supporting her or providing for her. The prophet of God, Elijah, announced the famine to the king Ahab. This was the seventh king of Israel. And the prophet announced this situation. In other words, God announced this famine. This is going to happen on the earth. So we need to be prepared for all the things that the Lord God is announcing. We need to be listening, paying attention, and not only paying attention, but put in practice this thing and obey these things. We read this one in Kings chapter 17, verse 1. There shall be neither dew nor rain these years except by my words. That was the prophet said. Except by my words. Three years and six months, no raining on the earth. We have been. 
You remember how long we have been right here in California without rain, and we are very concerned, very worried? Probably one year, probably a month, and everything is dying. And we see the, uh, the news on the TV, on the social media, about the terrible situation the California is, is having. That we have to bring things of fruit, vegetable from another state. Because we are not producing right here because of the drought, because it's not raining. And we are concerned. And we see, we watch the news and we are uh, uh, watching it and we see that the, these people in the news are saying, we got to give thanks to the farmers because they are working too hard to provide for us. But we need to we we need to ask for rain because we need the rain to have this all this fruit and all these vegetables on the table. So the prophet said, "Except by my words." In other words, this is something that the Lord God is commanding, and is certainly or truly, truly. It's going to happen. Pay attention to this. But we're going to see the God's impact. Even in the whole situation, the hand of God is there. He's a merciful God. He is a loving God. Sometimes we are accusing to God of many things that the really guilty are ourselves. For example, there is a lot of evil in the earth because of sin, not because of God. All things that he creates in Genesis, we read in the first and second chapter, were good. Good, 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 good. But now, why there is a lot of bad, bad, bad things? It's our responsibility. Even if it's not raining, it's our responsibility. We are destroying the planet, cutting all the trees, throwing garbage on the street. I have seen when I'm driving, people, they get down the window and throw the garbage on the street. How is that possible? That's not fair. God is seeing all those things. He's going to ask account of all those things. People think, I don't care. Okay, you don't care. It's your responsibility. But later on, don't be giving or saying that God is guilty of all the things that are happening here. And behind all these things, of course, is Satan. So, but we see the God's impact. What's going to happen? God changed the negatives to positive for this woman. She said, no, no, I don't have bread. I don't have nothing. Just the last dinner, I'm going to die. The Lord said something different. I'm going to change you that no for one yes. It's the same thing that the Lord is able to do with us today. Many times we're saying no. The Lord said, Say yes. You'll see. There's going to be yes. Let me tell you, let me share with you a, a story that is so true because it's a story of myself. I was 17 years old. I got very sick, terrible sick for almost one month. And I prayed to the Lord, I want to die. No live anymore. Please take me with you. No more living. It was, I was praying to the Lord for that. And I, I thought, he doesn't respond to me. 
He doesn't want to take me away. The Lord, I understand now, he was telling me, don't ask me for that. Don't say you don't want to live. Because I'm saying, yes, you're going to live. You're going to get married. You're going to have a family. You're going to have kids. You're going to be preaching. And you're going to be doing many things. I was thinking, no. He changed for a yes. It's his plans, not all plans. It does the impact of God that we don't know. But he's able to change the negative, the no that you have or I have in my mind or in our heart for one yes, one negative, for one positive. It, that's the story that happened with this woman. Don't worry. I'm going to change all the stands. He led her, God led her from poverty to abundance. The Lord God took her from danger to safety. She was in danger in a terrible situation in that country in that time. But you don't worry. Everything is going to be okay. He sang his prophet to help her. God sent the provision to her. He sent the man, his man, to provide for her. It was almost that God himself was going, descending to be providing for her. The prophet representing the Lord God. God's chain, I do not have, to I have plenty. That's the impact of the Lord God. That's the impact that he is able, able to do in our lives. He changed everything. We only need to allow him to do it. But he's able to do everything. I have no breath. That's what she said to the man of God. And this widow was a woman, a woman of faith. How do we know that that was a woman of faith? We can think, we, we can say, how is it possible that was a woman of faith? And she's saying, I don't have bread. This is my last dinner. I'm going to eat this one, me and my son, and we are going to die. You know what? Even the people of faith sometimes are disappointed or sometimes are sad, are depressed. You remember the prophet? We are saying that God sent his prophet. Where was the prophet? He was in a cave. And he was depressed and saying, everybody is worshiping the idols. Everybody is not alive except me. I am the only one. And the Lord God said, you are not the only one. I had thousands of men that are not worshiping the idols, are worshiping me. He was depressed. I want to die. He said to God, the prophet Elijah, I want to die. I don't want to continue living. He was depressed. And he was a man of faith. James also said that he was a man of passions similar to us. And this prophet prayed earnestly to God for no rain, and it will not rain in the air for three years and six months. So even the people of faith, sometimes we are depressed, we are sad, but it doesn't mean that we don't have faith. We have faith. We continue having faith in the Lord. And the Lord is the mediator, and he's with us, encouraging us. Or we got another brothers or sisters encouraging us. Even the apostles, remember, they had to pray to the Lord to increase their faith. But 
they were men of faith. So she was a, a, a woman of faith. God could communicate with her. That's the, 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 the reason that we believe that she was a woman of faith because God talks to her. She wasn't a Hebrew woman. She was a Gentile woman. But God communicate, talks to her. I'm going to send my prophet, and you're going to provide for him. How is it possible that God was saying that to her, and she doesn't have nothing, nothing to offer to the prophet, even for, for herself and her son? It's a cruel God that is asking things to us to do that he sees that we don't have those things in any way he is commanding us to do things that we are not able to do? No. He's a loving God. He thought, I'm going to provide for her and for my man. We have right here in the congregation in 214 Norway Road, mm, women's of faith. We got right here. Sisters that are gathering together to study the Bible, calling to others, encouraging even to, to the men of the congregations. Or, or wives are advising us every moment, you have to do this one, this way, is going to do better in this way for the Lord and for the congregation. That's faith, because they are concerned about the service and the way to worship to our Lord God in the best way. And that's faith. This woman was a woman of faith. The command of the Lord God to his prophet was, Arise, go to Sarephath, which belonged to Sidon, and stay there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. First King chapter 17, verse 9. She had been waiting for Elijah. She was waiting for the prophet. Maybe she thought the prophet is not coming. I don't know. She was eating and she only got in her house a handful of flour and a little oil. And that's it. And she having eaten yet that handful of flour because she was waiting for the prophet. I don't know when it's going to be come. But she has been waiting for him. But the question is, what would be expected of her? She doesn't have almost nothing. What to offer to the man of God? She had almost nothing. And the question is, what, question for us, what can you offer, brothers and sisters, what can you offer to the Lord? You can say, nothing. I almost have nothing, nothing to offer. Let me tell you, David had five Smooth a stone, one stick, and one sling. That's the thing that he had to kill the giant. The army of Israel offered to him a uniform of war. And he said, it doesn't fit me. I don't feel, feel comfortable with this. It's bothering me. I'm going to use this one. He used only five stones, one stick and one sling for God. That's what the thing that he offered to God. The rest of the soldier, it was the John David. The John David, a boy. When the Lord Jesus performed the miracle and he fed 5,000 and 4,000 men, Besides women and children, 
he asked to the apostle, how many loves do you have? What king I use? What do you offer to me to perform this miracle right now? And the apostle said, we got five loves to fish. We got seven loves and a little or a few fish. And he performed the miracle and he fed 5,000 men, 4,000 men, besides the women and children. That's me. That probably if all of these men, the 5,000, were married, we're talking about 10,000 people. It, at least they got one child. We're talking about 15,000 people. Amen? The same thing with the 4,000 men. A, what? What can you offer? What about the other widow that said in Matthew chapter, I'm sorry, Luke chapter 21. She offered only two coins. What can you offer to the Lord? Every one of us got something to offer to God. And God is going to transform the things that you offer. He's going to multiply the same way that Jesus multiplied the fish. There were leftover of bread and fish. And the Lord said, keep it because you're going to be hungry again. Save that food. So we can go for something to the Lord. Elijah arrived, thirsty and hungry. And he asked, please give me a little water in a jar that I may drink. That's said in First King chapter 17, verse 10. Probably she thought, oh, I was concerned, I was worried. Because I, I was thinking that this man was asking me for food. I don't have food anymore. He's only asking me for water. Remember, even to get water, it was too hard because it wasn't raining. He's asking for the water to survive that was for her and her son. Imagine you are so thirsty and somebody asks you for your bottle of water. Do you want to share it? Are you going to be able to share it? Probably you're thinking twice. Oh, I'm so thirsty. No more water. If I give it, I'm going to die. Please, give me a little water. This was like a test. In a jar that I may drink. He was going to get the water. And the prophet asked again, please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. Oh, man. That was said, First King chapter 17, verse 11. It's asking me now for my food, also for my food. The food that is for me and for my son. A handful of flour. How much do you think can be a, 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 a handful of of flour, probably a pound. I don't know, maybe like that. How much can you do with a pound of bread? Almost nothing. Please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. She answered, she responded, I have no bread. She feels Depression. She's so sad. The stress, with the stress. No breath. No nothing. And when we 
are responding like that, we are not responding with joy. We are responding with a sad face, with a, de a, a, a face of depression, almost crying. She sees only death ahead. That's the only thing that she is seeing. Only death ahead. There's no future. There's no hope. I'm going to die after to eat the handful of flour and the little oil that I have, and that's it. What do you have that God can use? We have something. We have something that the Lord can use. She only had a handful of flour and a little oil. And the Lord God used it. Trust in God. Even in the hard situation, even when the everything looks very bad, we need to continue trusting in God. We've seen a song that said, trust and obey. I know that it's hard to trust. It's very hard. It's like we, we ask a key for a toy. Imagine that the little girl got an old door, very old door, but that's the door that she loves because this is the only door that she, she has. But we are offering to her a new one, door, much beautiful than the old one that she has, but we need that she trusts in us and give the old one to give the new one. It's going to be easy to persuade that little girl to give to us the door. We are not showing to her the door, the new door. We are only asking her, give me your door. The surprise for her is going to be that we are going to give her a new door. Much beautiful. It's going to be hard. She's going to be howling. Her old door saying, no. It's the same thing with us. It's not easy to trust. But the Lord is saying, trust me. The Lord God is saying to us, trust me. The little thing that you have, that you offer me, I'm going to multiply it. Just trust me. We need to trust in the Lord God. But we are fearing. That's the problem. It's hard to trust because we are fearing. Fear is common in all. Even in the Christian, we are fearing. The apostles were fearing. They were walking, talking, seeing the Lord during three years. In many situations, they were fearing. But they were men of faith. The woman, the widow was a woman of faith. But she was fearing. And fear is common in all. It's a feeling that everyone is feeling about what's going to happen. What's going to bring tomorrow. What's going to bring the future. Fear for our families. We're fearing for families. The kids now are kids. Our children now are small. But what's, what's going to happen in the future when they grow up? We're feeling all those things. I'm going to be supporting my family. I was going to be providing for my family. Hey, I'm doing the best job hey, taking care of my family. 
advising to my family, disciplining my family, and many questions that we can ask. But we are fearing about our families. What about our health? I'm feeling good right now, but what's, what's going to happen in a couple of years later? I'm going to be in a good health. We are feeling for our health. I'm going to have the enough financial to pay the bills if I, if I get sick, if I get to the hospital for the surgeries, etc. And we are concerned. I'm going to be able to continue working if I am in a bad health. We're feeding all those things. What about our money? Fear for our money. What's our fear for our money? What happens if I lost my job? I'm going to be paying the rent. I'm going to have enough money for the future of my kids, for the college. Many, many things. What was the advice of Elijah? It was the following. Do not be afraid or do not fear. That's the, the advice. And say, make me, please make me a little bread cake first and do as you said. You were saying, I'm just gathering a couple of sticks to go to prepare the fire, to prepare a bread for me and my son and die. The prophet said, make me a little bread cake first. And then do as you said. She thought, this man is crazy. I only have a handful of flour. And he's saying that made for him first a piece of bread. And then I continue cooking for me and my son. There is no more flour. There's no more oil. oil. What are going to cook? A stone? God is not crazy. God is powerful God. We need to trust him. And like I said, it's not easy to trust. But we need to learn to trust. Thank you for trusting me. And invite me to be preaching for you. I'm trying to do my best. I know every man of the congregation are trying to do their best when they are right here at the pulpit. And thank you for that. But it's not easy to trust. And do as you said. God first. Remember that. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33. We need to seek first the kingdom of God. God first. The first commandment, love your God with all your heart, strength, and mind. And the second command is similar. Love your neighbor as yourself. God first. If we put God in first place, everything is going to be good. God's power. We're, we're going to see the God powers now. The ball of flour shall not be exhausted. First King chapter 17, verse 14 through 16. It's not going to be exhausted. God shall be providing until the rain come back again. That's the power of the Lord. We need to believe that. We need to trust that. He's a powerful God. He's a mighty God. He's an amazing God. Things turn out better than the widow expect. Not only food 
for that moment, not only food for tomorrow, not only bread for tomorrow, or after tomorrow, or for that week, food for three years and six months. That's unbelievable. When I was a kid, I, 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 I remember I read a book, that the book was a story of a powerful well that you throw in, in the well coins, you never start to get out coins. I was a kid, oh, it's a wonderful story. I went to the bed and sleeping and dreaming with that, with that story. I was got a lot of money in my pillow, under my pillow. But what happened in the book, in the story? That the man was so ambitious man. And, and, and at a time when he was trying to see inside of the world, he fell down. And now his wife came to the world and, and get him out, but he continued getting out many, many husbands. Many and many husbands. <laughs> you see, it was only a story, but this is not only a story, this is real. This is real. The Lord God provided him during three years and six months for this lady and the prophet. Three persons. We have all feared things that have never happened. That's normal. And the lesson that we learn from this widow are the following. She put God first. Number one, God is faithful at all times. We cannot give God more than he gives us. That's impossible. In conclusion, give to Jesus the first place in your life. He has promised to provide for your needs. Both needs. Spiritual needs and physical needs. I, all the time I put the spiritual needs in first place because that's, for me, is the most important needs. The physical and materials, we can be eating the best food every day, but we're going to die. That's a, a food that perish. But the spiritual food is a food that never perish. It's forever. Let's say yes to our Lord Jesus. Do not say no to Jesus this morning. Say yes. People that is not Christian, don't continue saying no. I don't want to be a Christian. Say yes. I want to be a Christian. Say please. Yes, I want to confess his name. I want to repent of my sins. I want to be baptized. Yes, I want to be baptized. Yes, I want to be saved. Jesus is waiting for us to save us. Thank you so much, brothers and sisters, and the lesson is yours.